Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to solo Varagon's Fist, the class quest weapon for Paladin. Varagon's Fist is a 31 eye level 200 mace, which is equivalent to a 26 BOE weapon, and with a solid 3.2 speed, it makes it arguably the easiest and best Paladin weapon to get in its level range, and it only takes about an hour extra to get. Essential upgrades after include the Pacifier, which is very rare and very expensive, but also very good. A cheaper but solid Sword of the Magistrate, which also requires a high level. Or a bind on pickup, the Pulverizer, which you can get for soloing Murderlock at level 37. For preparation, I would get Fish Liver Oil from the Red Ridge quest or Bag of Marbles from the Elwyn quest. Red Ridge Goulash or Murlockvin Soup, both from the Red Ridge quests. As well as a Sharpening Stone, which you can get from the AH or from Blacksmithing. You will also need a half decent weapon. I personally buy the Executioner Sword from either Antonio Pirelli, he patrols Goldshire, Sentinel Hill, Darkshire and Lakeshire, or from Brecken Menethil. It costs 1 gold and 42 silver at friendly, and comes in a limited quantity which means it might not always be up. You could also check the auction house on your server for a better or cheaper alternative. I also wouldn't spend more than 1 gold on a weapon at this point, due to the fact that Paladins have really big money issues early on, until they finally are able to start airwings the effort 40. I use a two-handed rep based talent tree, with my full talent tree being linked below in the description. To finish your preparation, go and buy scrolls from Adair, Gilroy, and Stormwind. Try to get one each of the highest level scrolls that you can use, and then bank these as we will be using them later. The first step is talking to Dithorian Rule and Stormwind. Talking to him at level 20 will allow you to get the Tome of Valor, which, when used, will give you a quest to talk to him again. Handing this in, then accepting his follow-up, sends you to Daphne in Westfall. Daphne is located in the southern part of Westfall. Hand in to her, and then talk to her again to start her Protect quest. It's worth noting that, even if you choose not to do the full Varagans questline, doing this after the Moonbrook Par of the Legend of Stalvin questline is incredible incredibly good XP per hour, standing at about 45k an hour. After having waited 20 seconds for her RP, you will face 3 waves of level 17 to 18 mobs. One wave of 3, 4, and then 5 mobs. These mobs only have heroic strike, and have very little armor. You're able to buff Daphne with Blessing of Might, and heal her if you need her to tank mobs. These mobs are also incredibly easy to split pull and melee kite. If you wish to learn these techniques, I will have links in the description. You're also able to eat and drink after every single wave. Here, we have the second wave of mobs. I successfully split pull them all the way back whilst melee kiting to Daphne, which makes them run to Daphne so I can kill the wave faster. I constantly keep an eye on her health to see if I need to take aggro from the mobs currently attacking her. You can also press Shift V to turn on the friendly nameplates, so I can keep an eye on our health without targeting her. It's also worth noting that you may want to have your shields, your lay on hands, your potions off cooldown in case you do make mistakes on this final 5 pack. Now we have the final pack. I failed the split pull, so I have to run back to Daphne so she takes a mob off of me so she can tank it. I successfully killed two mobs before needing to bubble, however I crumbled here and I should have healed myself and then Daphne, so I didn't have to potion, but I panic cancelled my bubble to try and get threat back. Overall though, it's relatively easy. You sit through another quick 30 second RP event, and then you hand back into Daphne, before being told to go back to Dothorian. Once back in Stormwind, hand into Dothorian for a really good new shield, which can be used for later, before picking up the next part which sends you to the gates of Ironforge. Go outside of Ironforge and hand in to Jordan Stilwell. Pick up his next quest. You are now required to get four items, one from Locke, one from SFK, one from Deadmines, 
and one from outside BFD. Once you arrive in Thelsimar, go into the northeasternmost building and talk to Baylor Stonehand. He'll ask you to get his shipment guarded by the ogres in the northeast corner of the zone. Ignore what Cresty says about killing the mobs if you have the add-on, and pick up the crate at 7121. It's also worth noting that you can get these four items in any order. This order is just what I recommend. You can then death walk back to Thelsimar and hand in to get the first out of four items required for Varigan's Fist. After doing Loch Madan, I boat to Orbidin and go to Thunderous Windweaver for the next and last item quest. This quest tells you to go outside of BFD and kill Nagas until a quest item drops. When you get to Black Fathom Deeps, you'll have to jump down and then go west on the minimap under the water. The core gem has a roughly 50% drop rate from the Nagas outside the instance here in Black Fathom Deeps. With the mobs being quite difficult, as such I'd only recommend playing one at a time, otherwise I'd run and try to reset the mobs. The sailors here have a 10 second disarm. When disarmed, I would try punching them once just to refresh the seal of the crusader if it's up, and then I'd stop auto attacking, as you'd just be giving them parry haste, which makes them attack faster, as well as you may potentially clip into your weapon swing when the disarm duration expires. This means that your two-handed sword weapon swing would not be instant. I would also use exorcism for added damage. The Nagas themselves are relatively easy in comparison, as all they do is cast Frostbolt, which can LOS around the walls here. They also have a 450 health heal, which you should probably save Hammer of Justice for. It's also worth noting that, come TBC, these mobs will no longer be elite. Once you have gotten the gem, you can go back to Thunderous and hand in. This is your second out of four items. Next, you're going to go to SFK. En route, be sure to get the Refuge Point and South Shore Flight Points. You can check for the level 21 healing potions en route, sold by Drovnar and Refuge Point, and Nandar in South Shore. When you get in the instance, you're going to equip your shield from earlier, and all you're going to do is run through. The wolves here have a chance to give you a debuff which slows your move speed when they attack you. So you hope to get a bit lucky on this, but it doesn't matter too much. When it starts looking bad, you want to use your bubble. Your main aim is to run to the surveyed spot here to save a load of time from killing really shit elite mobs with frost armor and that gives zero XP. I fuck up here though, and the mobs are too close to the evade spot when I'm trying to evade them so they're hitting me. As such, I have to jump out and waste my lay on hands to try and jump back in and evade them properly. I then switch to Blessing of Wisdom, so I can start regenning enough mana to kill this mob. Once that's done, you can start killing this mob, as well as every other mob in this room. Be aware though that these mobs have frost armor, and the wolves have the move speed debuff. Always go back to the evade spot if you ever fuck anything up. Next, you have a really tough pull. Your aim is to kill one of the wargs here before you're forced to reset. I fuck up here though. The boss didn't cast his spell enough, and I pulled the mob behind him, which doesn't happen every time, and the mob below me. Because of this, I'm forced to reset. Don't be too scared of this boss's ability. You can LOS it around the stairs' railings, or in the pillars in the middle of the room. Just think of it as a fancy entangling roots that does 35 drain life damage, except you can't use Blessing of Freedom on it. On the second attempt, we get a near perfect pull, and we're able to kill the warg with relative ease.
After this, you can jump down and easily kill the mob below. Then it's just a matter of killing the other warg, resetting again in the evade spot, and then finally killing Rathilgo. There's no trick to killing Rathilgor, other than just auto-attacking him with Crusader Judgment up and Seal of Command on. After this, open Sorcerer Ashcrombie's cage with the lever and talk to him so he opens the door to the courtyard. Once the door is open, you should know that going behind the crate in front of you is an evade spot in case you mess up. Otherwise, you want to run into the corner of the upper part of this wall here. And then you just jump. Run along the wall, and then run into the corner of the stables on your left to evade all of the mobs that you just pulled from below you. Then once they're evaded, you simply run toward the crate in front of you and pick up the hammer. You can either hearth here or death walk back to South Shore. Now, you should get the items that you banked earlier in the form of scrolls, buff food and sharpening stones if you chose to, as you only need to get the last item. The last item sends you into dead mines. Simply run through the outside part by jump turning to avoid days as much as possible with using bubbles and potions as a last resort to get into the instance. Do not, and I repeat, do not use Lay on Hands, as you need this for later. Once inside, you will again use a bubble to run through all the mobs, avoiding daze and damage as much as you can by putting on your shield and jump turning as much as possible. Run all the way through to get to this evade spot here. It's perfectly fine if you choose to kill a few mobs en route, if you want to get here safer, this is just the faster way. Once the mobs have evaded, use all your consumables that you stored in your bank. Then, much like how you killed with Ilgor, you want to kill Raxor's adds one at a time, the Defias Watchman. Kill an ad, then jump back into the evade spot. Don't be scared to use health potions if you need to. Be aware that these mobs do run. You can also wait for Raxor to be further out, so he won't aggro for a while while you're killing the adds. You should also be aware of the fact that Raxor can knock you down. The knockdown effect has a duration of about 2 seconds and deals about 40 damage. Notice how Raxor does not pull here. That is because he's walked as far out as he can, which means you can easily kill his ads without having to pull him. Now's the boss fight. Be careful not to waste any mana, and remember to use Devotion Aura to reduce the damage you take over Retribution Aura. Make sure you have full duration buffs, scrolls, etc. As this fight can be close, especially at level 26. Start off by keeping your seal of the Crusader Judgment up. Then, when Judgment is on a 2 second cooldown, use your Hammer of Justice, or Hodge, and do a Seal of Command Judgment for extra damage. After the Hodge expires, you can use your Marbles and Fish Liver Oil to make the fight a lot easier for yourself and then you just fight him and hope to get lucky. When you get low health, remember to use your health potion. Use it after you have just swung, as using a health potion resets your current weapon swing timer, although using a mana potion does not reset your current weapon swing timer. Then after using your potion and your low health again, use your bubble, preferably divine protection, and heal all the way to full. 
And lastly, you can use Lay on Hands if you're really struggling. If you are completely out of resources and Raxor is still not dead, then remember that mobs, even bosses, move gradually slower from about 20% health onward. You should be able to switch to Blessing of Wisdom and kite him around the room that you're currently in. Only damaging him with judgments and melees when Hodge is off cooldown. I needed to do this on my Paladin at 26, but not at 27. And then when you kill him, the door to the next room will open. Next up, you're going to run to another evade spot. I would clear a couple of mobs here to feel safe, but be aware of the patrol that spawns behind you after killing the first boss. After the patrol behind you catches up, or you clear about halfway through, then run to the door and open it. Start running through and bubble. You need to save your bubble for this room, as the goblins have a ranged 2 second duration knockdown, which can easily kill you if you don't respect it. Then carefully go up this log and drop down onto the other side. This can be a bit finicky, but keep your composure and you should be okay. Simply wait for the evade, and then drop down and kill one of the goblin woodcarvers in the corner. Loot the mob for the lumber, and that will be the last item that you needed for Varigan's Fist. Then you can either hearth here, or deathwalk back to Sentinel Hill. Fly to Ironforge. Then go outside to the gates and talk to Jordan Stillwell again. Wait for his long RP event. Then talk to him again and he will reward you with Varigan's Fist. Thank you guys for watching and I hope it helped. Remember to like as it really helps, and to subscribe if you want to see more guide videos like this leading into TBC Classic. See you guys in a bit.